All right, here we are, finally. Ready for part four of The Hidden Hand. Uh, dialogue with The Hidden Hand, self-proclaimed Illuminati insider by Wes Penray, Illuminati News, December 27th, 2008. Now this took place on, if you haven't seen the other videos leading up to this one, part one, two, and three. Then this is a conversation through a forum online through above top secret and it's a dialogue between this individual user called the hidden hand and the uh all the other members of above top secret who are collectively dubbed ats uh for purposes so i'll be going through the questions and answers and we'll be looking at what's going on here after these videos have been laid out, I plan to extrapolate and um, talk a bit more about the material contained within these, and um, yeah, it's very exciting. But warning, if you haven't seen the other ones, definitely a good idea to go have a look, because you will, might likely be shaken by the fact of who we're having a conversation with, who um, communicates who it is and or who they represent um, within the material. So if you haven't gone and being walked into where we are right now i suggest going back to video one all of the links will be in the comments of the video so go ahead and check it out um and then come back once you get up to here if you're already up to here then well straight in um dialogue with the hidden hand self-proclaimed straight off the bat this is his introduction as to why he was doing it etc etc down i do believe we're up to Somewhere around page 30, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, fourth session. Haha, -ha, okay. <clears throat> Better put on my hidden hand voice. <laughs> well, no. So, fourth session, hidden hand. Okay, as I stated. Unfortunately, my remaining time is shorter than I had planned. This was unforeseen and unavoidable. I will not have sufficient time to answer all of your questions, so I will for the most part focus my remaining time with you upon responding to those questions that I feel to be from the heart, ones asked by those who are generally, genuinely looking to take something away with them of import from our discourse here together. My second focus will be upon answering other intelligent or insightful questions that can be used to further develop our discourse. I desire to impart as much as I am able with you in the short time we have left. I will also, as far as possible, answer other questions that I feel are important in the grand scheme of things, meaning that even if the questions seem to be from someone more intent on finding things to <coughs> debunk, if that question ultimately serves a greater purpose, I will do my best still to reply to them. Please bear in mind that in light of my above, in light of the above, many of my answers will need to exercise more brevity than I would ideally like, though this is necessary to respond to as many of you as I can. Without further delay, I shall continue with our discourse. ATS. Do you know me? Do you know who I'm who I am? What part do I play in all of this? When will I awake? Will I awake? Should I awake? I feel it in me, but I'm afraid to let it out. Help me. Hidden hand, do I know you as the individuated human expression trying typing to me over cyberspace? No, no, I do not. What part of you, what part do you play in all of this? What part do you want to play? The choice is always entirely yours. Whether you are consciously aware of it or not, you are co-creating the storyline on this planet, and my advice would be to do so consciously. When will you awake? When do you want to awake? Do you want to awake at all? If you answer to this question yes, then use the catalyst and tools we have provided for you, all of the content up until here. I have made many subtle and not so subtle and even overly blatant statements within this topic as to how you may choose to do this. I feel it in me, but I'm afraid to let it out. Help me. Why are you afraid? Do not reply to that question, but rather ask it to yourself. 
during your quiet time, where you work upon yourself. You do work upon yourself, don't you? If not, now would be a good time to start. Sit in silence, switch off all non-essential electrical appliances, example, leaving the refrigerator on would probably be a good idea. The electromagnetic field they create disturbs I've always been curious about this point here, whether there was a typo or not. Because he says, leaving the refrigerator on would probably be a good idea. And then in brackets he goes on to say, the electromagnetic field that they, I'm assuming he's talking about refrigerators, create disturbs your brainwave patterns and makes it difficult for, you to mind, for your mind to achieve the deeper alpha and theta states conducive with relaxing deeply and hearing your inner voice. Or is he just collectively talking about all electrical fields at that point? Either way. Uh, I do and have heard some interesting things about how white goods are good at masking um, from um, audio listening devices. So much so that um, real life spy games have been having conversations in and around white good departments in department stores and things like that because they are, when they're running, the frequency that they make could disturb actively your brain patterns. But if you are deep into your meditative practices where you're actually communicating with um, other parts of the universe, I'll say, then, uh, you know, you should be well and truly aware of whether or not you're in your state or whether you're not in your state. Or if you are, then how long you've been in there and what affects that and how that changes things. And if you're not, then that's ways that you can further strengthen your meditative practices. Back to the material. Ask your infinite creator to help you. Thank her. Because... You know that he will. Be honest with yourself. Why are you afraid? Remember that this is a game that you are playing and that is not reality. When you find and come to know your creator living within you, you will know that there is nothing to fear. Be the strong and courageous soul that deep down you know yourself to be. Do not hide your inner light. Trust yourself and shine your light into the darkness. We ask our infinite creator to guide you and illuminate your path. ATS. Are the P to B, powers that be, for clarity from Wes Penrith, uh, focusing on creating a negative point in the universe to upset the balance of our universe? Yeah, no. ATS. Was 9-11 ritual a creation of a stargate? HH. No, it was a ritual human sacrifice. That and the obvious catalyst for the so-called war on terror which is all about removing rights and degrading our ability to represent ourselves within the legal environments, change persons and how living humans are treated within the societal norms. If you know the material, you should be like, all right now. Um, ATS, next question. So could the predictions of Federation of Lights, good child, could have been true in a sense instead of a UFO or our understanding of a UFO could be light bearers influencing mankind to ascend or descend to a higher or lower vibration status? I uh, don't know who exactly this good child is, the Federation of Life's good child. I might have some Googling after we're done here and add anything relevant to the comments in the subject. Uh, in the in the you know, description of the video, if there's anything of value that I find, if there's not, then you know, I'm going to leave it blank. But if you're curious yourself, then by all means, go have a look. The good child from the Federation of Life. Apparently, Hidden Hand knows her pretty well and goes, "Yeah, she has a good heart. She just tuned into the wrong channel and listened to the wrong program." I mentioned before that if one does not exercise the appropriate protection and discernment. What was initially a positive channel can very easily become unknowingly corrupted by a negative one. When they start giving you dates and times, you know that something is amiss. Let me repeat that. When they start giving you dates and times, you know that something is amiss. Giving dates and times that are not going to come to pass succeeds in putting out the light of the channeler's message by destroying the credibility of the messenger. All predicted dates and specifics are cultivated to destroy the reputation of the individual channeling the light. That's amazing and something that everybody needs to be well aware of. That doesn't mean that, that you can't do it or that there aren't people who can't do it. There's always exceptions to every rule, somewhat. But 
Yes, that's that's a general pretty good piece of advice there. Is the cre ATS is a creation of fear, terror, horror, and suffering by your kind to create loose emotions of feeding at the time of harvest? No, says Hidden End. This is an interesting one I'm going to very touch on very quickly because HH and Hidden Hand and the family that they, the family of consciousness that they represent or the social memory complex that they represent is only one of them here on the planet. So even though they're not the ones doing it, that doesn't mean that it's not happening. Okay. That means that there are other ones doing it, not those ones. <clears throat> are the bloodlines that have been infused with the ancient wisdoms trying to become gods themselves? <laughs> there is no need to try. <laughs> Humanity needs to grow beyond the stagnating concept of gods. The idea of God takes the power out of your own hands and places it upon some shadowy unknown figure somewhere out there. In other words, outside of yourself, instead of God, see creator. So is there, so there is no need to try. We already are creators, and so are you. The only question is, will you create consciously or subconsciously? ATS, what is 1111? Hidden hand, think of it as an alarm clock. What are alarm clocks for? To wake you up. Confirmations of this in numerology contained within times and everything else like this is just, it's, it's a fantastic way for the universe to go, boo, 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 until you get to the point where you go, oh, the universe is talking to me, at which point you'll develop communication. Think about how um, Western cultures develop communication with cultures that they don't understand how two people who speak different languages come together and they can start communicating. That's basically what we're talking about here. You're communicating with the universe, but first you have to build a communication method. So you start by mimic, by shocked mimicry and recognizing mimicry like, hey, and then, hey, and then, hey, and then, yeah, hey, and then, tree. Tree. You know, so first you've got to actually make sure that you've got contact. That's what the numbers are about. And then the numbers start to develop meaning. But at the beginning, numbers just mean simply as an alarm clock. As you get further into the awakening process, numbers mean more to you relatively. And it's all about the relativity factor. That's why there's no book on them. And any book that is on them is just a guide. ATS, please explain newborn babies. Please explain how newborn babies are infused with spirits after birth. They are not. A soul enters into the physical container usually long before the birthing process, sometimes later, but still before the actual birth. ATS, does a website like this serve the purpose of negative generating? HH, that depends on how you use it. It has the potential to be either negative or possible. It is up to you how you use the potential. ATS, what is wrong with having an ego and why do New Age religions try to suppress the ego? Without an ego, it seems as though one can't ponder his own existence or, in fact, learn from the wealth of knowledge that we are searching for in making mistakes and correcting those mistakes. In hand, there is nothing wrong with having an ego. Your ego is an excellent and invaluable tool. Yet, as with any tool, if you do not have it under control, it carries the potential to become something dangerous. And do you and, do you and others much harm? Don't give a baby a chainsaw. Teach the baby. ATS, hidden hand. Strangely, my concern is that I will be recycled back into the wheel of life and be reborn with a new brain and lose everything I have so arduously learned in this lifetime. Hidden hand, your soul remembers everything you've ever experienced. The only reason you don't remember it all now is due to what we term the veil of forgetfulness. If you came into new incarnation, into each new incarnation with access to your soul memory, there's no point in your coming into space and time. It would be like playing a computer game with all of the cheats, and I know there are many of you out there who do do that, and I'm one who absolutely cannot understand any of the logic behind that, or it defeats all the purpose of it. Yeah, for shits and giggles and fun, and how long does that last until you're trying to find more shits and giggles and fun? There are much more deeper enjoyments and deeper joys out of life than just shock factors. And that's what we're talking about here. Him, a small level. Your soul remembers everything. You came into each time. 
there's no point in you coming into space and time if that was the case. It would be like playing a computer game with all the cheats. You wouldn't learn anything, and it takes the fun out of playing the game. Remember that this current physical body you carry around with you is not who you are. It's just the vessel for your essence. Who you are is real, with a capital R, and cannot be destroyed. You will retain all your memories of this life experience once you pass onto the realm of time-space, or that which some call heaven. Space-time is illusion. Time-space is real. That infinite being living within and around your body, namely your soul, who is, is who you really are. The part of you that thinks and feels and loves, it is, it will always be part of you. ATS, my dream is to be a master, such as yourself. Hidden hand, <laughs> I'm not a master. I am a growing and evolving soul, just as you are. We're just at different stages of our development. You will get to where you desire to be. It takes time and practice. Be sure to make that time. Be sure to make time to enjoy the journey. ATS, I endeavor each day to master myself and change, to develop a mind that has mastery over my body. I feel I have come so far in this lifetime, and yet not far enough. Hidden hand, you are on the right path, in that you are consciously choosing to work upon yourself. Many there are in this world who are not even aware of such a concept. Remember, though, that it is not only the mind you must develop, but also your soul. Work with your feelings as well as your thoughts. Cultivate compassion, as that is the main thing you will begin working with in fourth density. See yourself within all others and treat all others as you would like to be treated yourself. And then remember one crucial thing. There are no others. ATS. My dream is to one day personally meet great masters like yourself and learn what you know. Hidden hand. Then here is what you must do. Go and find yourself a mirror. Gaze deeply into it and say this magical word. Hi. You will indeed meet with us. Backstage, once the game is over, when you see us out of costume, you will recognize us as your age-old friends. ATS, thank you for coming here and sharing your vast knowledge of the universe. I have so much to ponder. Hidden hand, you are welcome. Thank you for your questions. I feel the desire within you to progress. You have it within yourself, capital S, self, to be all that you wish to become and much more that you cannot even imagine. We look forward to sitting down for a good old reminisce with you on the other side. In the meantime, keep trusting in and working upon yourself and live each moment in thanksgiving to our one infinite creator. May our infinite creator bless and guide your path. ATS, honoured sir or madam, I wish to be the one to bring a new planetary energy system to the world. As it is assumed that the families have great knowledge, I humbly request access to this small bit of needed information. A you to you message to set up a more secure route of communication would be splendid. I presume. I am aware I can never be a member, but acolyte would suffice. I am also aware of trade-off would be uh, where a trade-off would be in the offering, and discussions of such would be held with respect, though not with guaranteed acceptance. I await your reply. I am sorry, says Hidden Hand, that this is not possible. One is born into the family and raised in a very specific and rigorous way, which engenders unwavering loyalty. No matter how keen and sincere one may be to join us, we can only place our trust in those raised in our ways. I would not wish the conditioning process we go through on anyone. It can be grueling at times, and it is too late to begin the process once childhood has passed. As for further communication, unfortunately, this is also not possible or allowable for me. I have given as much information as is permissible for me during this discourse. There are many informational gems within these pages for those who truly seek to develop themselves. Some are obvious, others are more subtle and multi-layered. Take them within 
and ask your infinite creator to bring you insight. We wish you well upon your journey and look forward to seeing you at the after show party. ATS, I'm still not clear on what the harvest is. A harvest means to reap what has been sown by you. Hidden hand, no, no, not by us. We did not sow. Our infinite creator did. We did not reap. Our infinite creator does. We help to prepare the harvest by separating the wheat from the chaff for want of more eloquent metaphor. ATS, will it be an instantaneous change or will there... Or of which there will no longer exist the physical realm as we currently know it to be and experiencing as an illusion? Hidden hand, I've already covered this elsewhere in the topic. I would encourage you to read through again and find the information I've already presented on how the harvest will occur and what the different variations of experiences will be like. A very important one to remember because it has within it the concepts and ideas that really push the boundaries of understanding for a limited human evolved monkey, we'll say. ATS, thanks for answering my previous questions. I have some more, if that's okay. One, how can karma be overcome, if at all? Is there an end to the karmic cycle? Two, is time really as we perceive it, or is it another 3D illusion? Three, are your family members born with the knowledge of what they are and where they're from? If not, and it's all taught and passed down, have you ever doubted or questioned any of it? Thanks, Hidden Hand. Number one, no, karma cannot be overcome. It must be worked off. In other words, if you've hurt someone, be it physical, emotional, or however else, you will have to, at some future point, experience what that felt like for them. The law of karmic effect is not a punishment. It is a tool of learning. It is an educational medium, my addition, which is set in place to promote personal growth and development. If you have to feel the consequences of your actions, there is a higher likelihood of you choosing a different course the next time around. It is also important to hold in mind that it works both ways. Seek, therefore, to ensure that you, the effect of your presence upon those others whom you encounter upon your journey are positive and beneficial. 1B. Part B to answer number 1. A karmic cycle is brought to completion once you have learned the lessons intended for you from it. If you keep repeating the same mistakes, you'll keep cycling until such a time as you get the message and break the cycle. But yes, ultimately, ultimately, all of us will learn that which we need to learn and all of us will find our way home. For some, it just takes longer than others. Linear time is more accurately described as an intentional fabrication. The true nature of time is cyclical. Though remember also that even cyclical time is part of creation and creation, beautiful as it may be, is also an illusion or more accurately a thought form of our infinite creator. Creation is not real, but the creator and co-creators of it are. Three. This is an excellent question. I will devote some time to it. Firstly, there is a distinction to be made. When I speak of family in this particular reply, I am referring to the power lines, i.e. those that do not originate from this planet. The bloodlines that you know of, whilst they are part of our extended family, are not born with the same extent of spiritual esoteric power that we are, and in this response, I am referring to our true and pure family. We are not born with the same veil of forgetfulness as you are. The veil is still in place, but it would be most accurately described as being somewhat mm, thinner. We see the invisible connections of life, which are hidden from you, because we retain access to more than just the third density perspective, not dissimilar to the manner in which some people can see what you call auras. This is because you are working your way up, whereas we have chosen to step down in order to help you. We could not do this as successfully if we had to forget all that we had learned. In other words, to you, everything appears to be as separate 
We see that this is not the case. We do not have direct soul memory, as in the manner that you remember what you did yesterday, but we may access any portion of our soul memory we so choose when we focus upon it, often in a meditative state. Personally, my experiences are different again. In other words, due to my specialty in the spiritual disciplines, but I will go into that in more detail later. In response to another question, yes, information is indeed passed down, though unlike for yourselves, any one of us may with some effort check the validity of the information from our personal and group soul memory. Basically, where you see yourselves as separate human beings, we see and know that we are one. ATS. Then I am glad I picked up on that particular point. I found it to be a real ray of light, though I'm unsure what to do with it. This information feels as though it should comfort me, and yet it's difficult to feel comfortable knowing that evil, in part, makes us who we are. But thank you nonetheless. Hidden hand. Evil is not who you are. It is a part of the complex series of illusions that you use in third density to show you who you are not. The further up through the densities you work, the less polarity plays an important part in the game. The sixth density and density of unity is the last level that polarity is a factor, but even then it factors in a very different way. Instead of balancing positive and negative, you would be balancing love and light, compassion and wisdom. ATS, true, and I'm glad that you pointed that out to me. I think that what I really meant when I said you are alleviated is that your very essence is not evil or corrupt, and this alleviates you from my perspective because I'd for forged an idea of the ruling elite as being compromised of terminally corrupted souls. Hidden hand, no soul, no soul, no soul is terminally corrupted. Every soul is a beautiful individuated portion of our one infinite creator. Souls play characters in the game of incarnation. Souls can play some really mean and nasty characters, but underneath the disguise, they will always be beautiful. Remember this, every time one of these beautiful souls mistreats you as part of their storyline, they're just playing their part like any good actor does whilst on stage. Be thankful to them for their sacrifice and learn the lessons they are bringing to you. ATS, you say we all... You say we all mingle in between incarnations, but I suspect the nature of our perception and interaction in that realm does not com is not comparable to our earthly methods of interaction. Of our earthly methods of interaction, and therefore, as a united entity, there'll be no independent laughter. I have a few what I feel are probably final questions for you. Hidden hand, not so. In terms of individuated souls who can see and understand that they are not separate but interconnected, it is an illusion that space is empty. You will still interact as an individual, yet at the same time you will see how we are all one. It is difficult to explain in a way that makes third density sense. We do not have the words or concepts to describe it. We no longer need words where we are going. ATS. How do you know all of this? And I really mean no. Clearly you've been taught in great depth about the nature of existence, but how do you know this firsthand? How is it more than faith for you? Have you been able to avoid forgetting upon reincarnation? I've made reference to this in my answer to, my, to the previous poster. ATS 2. You seem to be suggesting that your methods of physical enslavement are intended to force us into spiritual awakening, but if that is so, why are the methods of spiritual suppression used against our general populace? Chemicals, organized religions, sociological. I understand why you obstruct our material lives, but not why you obstruct our spiritual development. Hidden hand, think of it as a test. Have you ever noticed? And just when you think you've found something, it really feels like truth for you. Something will come along and make you doubt it. To make you doubt the truth. 
and in so doing to also doubt yourself in believing it it happens all the time in fact almost every time you have some new revelation that gets you all excited and it happens quite by design you cannot see this however as it's happening beyond third density comprehension in a realm where everything could be seen as a joining and relating to everything else synchronicity all a magical part of our infinite creator's ingeniously creative mind and excellent sense of humor and irony. Can you see how the test works? Just when you find something that you've weighed up and dissected with your discernment and decided to integrate it into your concept of truth, along comes the challenge to your newfound beliefs, usually in the form of an event or something that others may say to dissuade you. Your spiritual development, like all other aspects of your progression, is something that you have to work for. How do you know if your newly discovered truth is really true if you've never tested it? The test is this. In the face of challenge, who do you trust? Do you trust what the outside world is showing you or do you hold fast to that which feels like truth deep within you? That is something only you can answer for yourself. I am sorry I do not have time left to respond to all of your questions, so I selected the ones I felt to be the most important. I have enjoyed our communication. Sithral, I'm guessing that's a login username of the NTS member, and am happy to have made your acquaintance. Well, I must press on with more questions. I ask that our infinite creator bless and guide you on the path and give you the courage of your convictions. Be well, friend. I look forward to meeting up with you when we've completed the game. ATS, I have one more question for you, if I may. What question has not been asked of yet that is most important for us to know, if any? And if there is any, would you consider it asked now? Not sure if this one does any good, but it stuck in my mind last night. Hit in hand, an excellent and incisive question to ask. I think that what I shall do is to save this question for the very end of our discourse. It will be an effective way to bring our time together to a close. ATS, hit in hand. I know you're trying to focus on spiritual questions and questions about the density shift, but if you could detract for a moment to answer my questions about shape-shifting, I'd appreciate it. I will, but I must be very brief, I am sorry. Shapeshifting is not a natural phenomenon. Shapeshifting creatures and races do not exist, at least certainly not in any realm, galaxy or density we have ever experienced. However, there are certain rituals that when engaged in enable this to take place. It has to do with the fact that the body is, as is true of all physical things, is not really solid. Sure, it looks and feels as if it is, but in actuality, all matter is composed of atomic and subatomic particles of light within molecules and compounds. As I say, I'm being brief, though, through necessity and don't have time to go into the science. There are certain rituals which, when undertaken, allow for a range of manipulation of the so-called solid body mass to take place. I have seen some grotesque images in my time, which I really prefer not to dwell upon. I trust that even in some small way this will have answered your query. And this next question I will have to finish on for tonight, I have somewhere I must be. ATS, hidden hand. I wish to thank you for your enlightening words. It has been an utmost pleasure of mine to read what you have spoken. I do, however, have a couple of questions as I look into myself. I see or feel as though I am an old soul who has learned many things and possibilities. Who are are we to know how far along we have come in regards to obtaining a higher spiritual being during the coming harvest? Hidden hand, you're most welcome. Appreciation is always appreciated. Appreciating, Appreciating appreciation appreciates the appreciation into more appreciation of appreciating the appreciation. I am unsure whether your question refers to now or once the great harvest is accomplished. I've already touched on what happens after a few, after in a few replies, so I'll go with the former. As for now, there is a simple question, there is a simple method to check on your progress. Despite what appears to be going on in the world at large, 
how loving and how harmonious are you are your personal relationships remember that the world is your mirror casting back at you the reflection of that which you have projected into it how many arguments do you find yourself engaging in is there bitterness or acrimony within the ranks do you look at others and then think about how you would like to change them or do you love them and accept them as they are loving and accepting someone for who they are is known as unconditional love that is something you will spend much time working upon when graduating into fourth density it is a good idea to get a head start now loving and accepting someone as they are does not mean accepting abusive behavior but it does mean loving and accepting the person or the soul not the soul's behavior the behavior is not who they are the soul within is who they are the quality of your relationships is an excellent mirror from which to engage the quality of your output or in other words that which you are creating do you look at a person and concentrate to a greater or lesser extent upon the things that you dislike about them and wish you could change or the qualities that you would like and admire in them remember that we have said that all thought word and deed is creative you get back exactly what you send out so when you send out the thought why is she why is she so hard to live with why is he always behaving like this ask yourself what exactly are you doing now focus here as this is so obvious you could miss it and in fact most do take away the question from your sentence and this session sorry take away the question from your sentence and essentially you are saying she is so hard to live with he is always behaving like this do you see what you're doing? Remember, all thought is creative. You have just created the very behavior in the person that you wish to change, simply because you do not understand the law of radiation and attraction. Now try an experiment. Take someone in your life that you love, but sometimes have trouble getting along with. Think about the thoughts you have projected about that person, the negative thoughts, and ask yourself, does the behavior that you do not like in that person in any way correspond to the thoughts you have been having about them if you're honest with yourself it's a strong bet that it does sure they must have behaved that way in the first place to make you notice that you didn't like it but we all have off days sometimes the more you focus on that behavior the more you are going to see of it it's just life doing what it does and conforming to your expectations about the way it will be for you sure they must have behaved sorry now having recognized this what will you do about it simply notice your negative thoughts as they arise literally catch yourself as you are having them and then simply change your perspective focus instead about the things you like about this person how you love their smile the sound of their happy laughter the way they do such and such nice thing how helpful and loving they can be keep putting those positives positive thoughts out persevere and you may as you may have a bit of negative work to undo first but just keep catching yourself and focusing on the positive then prepare yourself for an almost magical transformation of your circumstances Always monitor your thoughts and pay attention to their quality because what you think about is directly related to what you will see around you and what life will show you. It is a difference between conscious and subconscious creation. Conscious and subconscious creation. Which are you participating in? ATS. And what of our loved ones? Or more appropriately, my soulmate who I love dearly, will I be able to take this new journey of the harvest alongside my loved ones? That will, hidden hand, that will depend upon whether or not you both graduate or have to repeat the cycle. 
Though rest assured, even if for one lifetime you were to be apart, you will always be together in time and space in between incarnations, and you will be able to plan many future lives or incarnations together. ATS, one more thing, as I know there are others who are longing for questions answered, why do we dream in metaphors which make no sense? I do not have time left tonight to respond sufficiently, but the short version is that the universal mind speaks in archetypical imagery, in a similar way that the writing in some of our oriental languages uses a symbol whereby a collection of words or meanings are contained within what is essentially a symbol, so the universal mind uses archetypes to communicate in dream time, just like understanding any new dialect, you just need to learn the language. And I'm going to add here very quickly, for you, the language for you, uh, all of this again is relative, not their dream definitions will correlate with your dream definitions 100%. Everybody has an internal dictionary and a correlative experience gives them an accurate perspective relative to you. Use dream journals, but don't take them as gospel. Uh, dream, you know, encyclopedias and lists of what they mean and stuff like that. You just need to learn the language. It's kind of like what I was talking about earlier with the synchronicity of numbers. Hidden Hand, uh, ATS, you are very, thank you very much, Hidden Hand. I strongly wish I may meet you someday and have a good talk. Hidden Hand, you are very welcome and it will happen as you wish. Not now in this lifetime, but soon when we have finished playing this game together. No rush though, friend. <laughs> We've all got time, space. We've got all the time, space in the world. All the time, space in creation, actually. I must go for tonight. I shall do my best to reply to as many of you as I possibly can do tomorrow before I take my leave. Good night to you all. I ask that our infinite creator bless and watch over you. Thank you. And that's the, um, that's the fourth session of Hidden Hand. So cool. Looking forward to the fifth one. That's very exciting. Uh, the fourth and the fifth one contain a lot of quick fire related questions in order to get straight down and knock as many of them out as possible. Um, the more deeper ones go in the first three sessions. Uh, it's fantastic though. I love this material. There's so much in it that I was able to take and see how I can use those catalysts to amplify the qualities of my life that I was struggling with. Um, that doesn't mean that I've taken on any cult or any sort of satanic or Luciferian belief systems or anything else like this. It just means that I'm able to be closer to the teachings, you might say, of um, Jesus than I previously was, you know, treat others the way that I want to be treated, understand and contemplate the differences between us as opposed to solely see them from my perspective understand that while i might be experiencing this somebody else will be experiencing this and while i like this somebody else will like this conversations and everything else flow on exactly the same in that dichotomy especially when you take into account the fact that we've all got different dictionaries that we use to define and color our different experiences with you very quickly start seeing how uh people live in different dimensions like yeah we all live here together but we also live conceptually in our own worlds like we cultivate we build we assimilate and replicate other thought forms and other things like this um within our own body mind complex um and then how we come together with each other begins to create those social memory complexes and yeah, they're, they're really cool. They're very, very cool. And they're, they're the mediums of which a lot of different things happen. Like, you know, um, for, I always say to people, forget about Hollywood. We're not talking about Hollywood. Forget about all that crap. Uh, but if you want to learn telepathy, moving things with your mind or all sorts of these types of things, then connecting with your soul is not just connecting with your soul you've also got to then connect with your soul and start going out the other side so where you can start figuring out reality going out that other side is what um hidden hand was talking about as time space so this is 
space time and then the other one is time space and that other one actually is the plato's cave um we're in the shadows and then the other side is the entrance to the cave but both of them tie together to create the full representation of what's being outside the cave so all of outside the cave the infinity of outside the cave I forget what I was going to tie that up with, but it is, it's just amazing material. Where was it? I'm just looking back at the PDF here. Can't remember what I was saying. Anyway, getting off track a little bit. I'll um I'll go back and have a look at the video and um, pick up my thought train that I was at. And if it is important, I'll leave it in the uh, description for you, uh, along with all the other stuff, the previous episodes, the links to download it, etc., um, etc., cetera, et cetera, uh, as well as all my other material. You know, so you can track me down and check me out if you feel like it. Uh, until next time, you know, when we get to finish off the fifth session, uh, <laughs> thanks for joining in and having fun with us, and um, we'll see you again soon. Have a great one. Ciao.